when we're doing single camera stuff, I operate. So I'm, you know, in there with the actors and I can, you know, direct them quietly, you know, while we're, you know, in a moment. So it doesn't, there's not somebody 20 feet back walk, watching a monitor yelling, you know, direction. You know, I think it's, yeah, I think it's just really, and it's my process. It's not for everybody. Well, hello, John. It is so nice to meet you. What's happening? How are you? <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, first of all, I enjoyed this film so much. Oh my goodness. I thought it was That's so great to hear. Um, Amazing. You, in addition to being the director, you were also a, a co-writer on this as well, right? Yeah. Um, I, uh, I had written a script prior to, um, what Dangerous Waters is. Um, and so when, uh, COVID hit, I ad readapted the script to be a much smaller scale with cast and, uh, locations and, uh, Mark Jackson, uh, rewrote the, uh, the idea for me. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to give anything away, but there are obviously yeah. so many turns, so many events that happen. I'm super curious, you know, if you kind of, did you guys have this, this all planned out from start to finish, or did some of it end up developing as you were writing or, you know, rewriting the story? I mean, there are new ideas from the first script for sure, just because um, there are different locations and different layers to the to the script um, than original. Uh, they were originally. Um, but yeah, it's the same kind of, uh, you know, premise for sure. Like, um, you know, young adult going on this crazy journey and having to overcome unsurmountable obstacles and doing it. The film opens, you know, with Rose. I mean, she's pretty battered up. She She's recounting what happened to her. Yeah. So I, we know right away that, you know, whatever the situation is, she's going to make it out. So I'd love to hear what kind of went into that creative decision. I mean, it's really uh, interesting because, uh, you know, the way the um, it wasn't originally in the script um, that moment. So uh, the feedback from, you know, when we were editing and everything, they wanted to get to the end of the first act quicker. So uh which um, obviously inherently cuts down on a lot of things that you want to learn about the people in the beginning of the film, you know? So um, having that element in the beginning asks a ton of questions right out of the gate. So uh, it gave us a little bit of breathing room, um, you know, developing relationships and all of that before we got to the, before we get to the, you know, end of the first act. I was very curious about how much time you guys actually spent out on the water. I mean, I'm assuming that the cabin scenes were set or at least filmed close to shore, but I, I would <laughs> love to know kind of just the behind the scenes scoop on that. For sure. Yeah. The, um, we shot everything practically on the boat. We didn't do any builds, um, which I thought was, uh, important, you know, just to, you know, give the actors like the feeling of being on the water the whole time. Um, the and you're right you know a lot of those moments were tied at the dock or close to the uh, anchor or something like that um but all of the of uh, you know the majority of the sailing stuff was done practically we were out at sea and um you know it was it was intense <laughs> but amazing like it did i think it helped rose and or odea and eric and saffron really experience it and and be um completely honest with the characters how are the night shoots because I, I mean i know night shoots can be difficult already but i mean add the fact that you know sometimes you guys are out on the water did that cause any complications yeah we had to uh be um kind of strategic with the night work because you know obviously we needed to have uh areas where we could put lifts with lights and um and uh so we shot a lot of those in marinas and we you know would paint out backgrounds um in vfx with vfx so gives you the sensation that you're at sea, but you're really not. Well, we're trying to end up shooting the 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 scenes on the island. I'm I'm very curious about that too. It was, it was a very beautiful location. Yeah, it was it was stunning. Um we uh in Samana in the north, uh there's a little peninsula in the northeast of uh Dominican Republic. Um so yeah, we shot it up there. It was incredible. So beautiful. Well, I also, you know, I wanted to talk to you about kind of the the mother and daughter bond in this film. You know, yeah. a lot of the times when you have a movie with a, with a teenager, I mean, there's love there, but sometimes, you know, they don't always get along. Um, yeah. But Rose really seemed to adore her mom, you know, from yeah. the beginning. Did totally. you have, I mean, like a, a, a larger backstory for them, you know, that we might not have gotten to see? It's said, you know, it's, it's illustrated in the story, you know, like they, um, Rose lost her father and 
you know, um, Alma lost her husband, you know, you know, when she was very young. And I think that inherently can go one of two ways. Like they could both play the, you know, be the victim of something like that, that happens, or they can, um, you know, be their best selves and, and recover. And I think, um, with the support of Alma, you know, um, and, Ro you know, with Rose, like raising her to be a, an amazing, um, young woman, I think that, uh, you know, creates a incredible bond between a mom and a, and a daughter. I also saw that you have, it looks like you have a pretty heavy background in cinematography, right? Yeah. I yeah. am curious, how does that knowledge kind of help you when you're in the director's chair for a film like this? Well, um, well, I shot this film as well. So I did, I did both things. Oh, yeah, so, that's incredible. So, yeah, you, so you shot it and you directed it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It helps so much on so many levels in, in like pre-production, like I'm, you know, I'm able to decide, uh, locations without another DP with their input, you know, I'm able to figure out what time of day to shoot things, you know, without somebody else's input, like all of that can be ironed out well in advance of ever being there with the actors. So, um, uh, I think it's huge. Uh, you know, I, I operate when we're doing single camera stuff, I operate. So I'm, you know, in there with the actors and I can, you know, direct them quietly, you know, while we're, you know, in a moment. So it doesn't, there's not somebody 20 feet back walk, watching a monitor yelling, you know, direction, you know, I think it's, yeah, I think it's just really, and it's my process. It's not for everybody, you know, so, um, but I, it works for me and I help, I think it works for, for the actors as well. I mean, it's also a pretty stunt heavy film. Um, and a lot yeah. of it was kind of like hand to hand combat. Um, yeah. Can you talk a little bit, you know, just about the work you did with the stunt coordinator and the actors to kind of, you know, get that desired effect? Absolutely. Yeah. We, um, we, before Odea flew to DR, we, we had her do um, tactical training with, with firearms and cause there was no live fire on our set. So I wanted her to really have the sensation of how, you know, guns worked and felt and sounded, you know, so she could have, um, you know, react properly to it, which I think she does. Like she's completely believable, um, in my opinion. Um, and then the fight training we had, we had her do that as well, um, uh, in LA. So when she got down there, um, Nick Benson, our stunt coordinator, who's amazing, uh, he, um, you know, we would go to the locations, the cargo ship, for instance, and we would block out um, before shooting. We would have Odea there with her stunt double, um, Sonia, and we would just kind of work everything out. So um, so when we got to the shooting of it, it it all made sense for everybody and there were no questions unanswered, I guess. Well, I'm also I've been a big fan of Eric Dane's work since I mean, since Grey's Anatomy. And I and I always yeah. enjoy seeing him in all yeah. these different kind of roles. He, um, yeah. he plays a lot of different characters. For I would sure. love to know just kind of how collaborating with him on this was. It was amazing. I mean, he's a pro. He's been doing it for so long. Like he, um, and he's so recognizable, like in Santa Domingo and, you know, we're out for dinner. Like you can tell what type of fan is, is walking up to him, either Grey's Anatomy or Euphoria, like from 20 feet away, he's like, we're, we would guess, you know, um, uh, no, he's a, he's a great guy. He, you know, I love him. Like he's a friend now. And, um, he, uh, was great to work with. Like, I think what really inspired me to approach him, um, was his work on euphoria. Like, I think, you know, that character, um, I'm drawing a blank on the character name, but he, um, what he does with it and, you know, how much is buried within him in, you know, w with that character and how it comes out and evolves throughout that series is, is, uh, is incredible. And I think it's stuff he's never done before. Like it's, was just mind blowing. And, you know, having him, um, on the film and, and able to create the Derek character, um, was, was amazing. Cause like, there's a lot of highs and lows with him and he, um, he nails it. I mean, the main cast is, is small, but honestly, you guys end up having a lot of actors in this film. I would love to know just kind of how it was working with everybody, the energy on set. How was this experience overall? It was incredible. I think, um, the way that, we are, we approach these kind of more actiony based, um, films as we, we find with the help of Nick, we, we cast stunt guys and stunt women to, to play these roles. So we're never having to double them within the scene and they can actually help the actress or actor Odea, for instance, in the fight sequence, um, really perform to the highest level, you know, and, um, 
it's a really good strategy. And, and, uh, Sousa, the producer on the film, Sousa Horvat, she, she was instrumental in that. She did that on the, our first film together and, and it worked incredibly well, um, on this one as well. Well, you know, lastly, I just love to know what you're hoping to do next. Are there any other genres you want to dive into as a director? I mean, do you want to, um, focus more on cinematography? Just, uh, what are you hoping to do in the future? We've already, um, written the script for the next film and we've, um, scouted locations already. So I think once, um, the SAG strike lifts, we will, uh, start casting and, um, and start getting the next one going. It's, it's definitely action-based, you know, there's, you know, to a mother daughter, female centric, um, protagonist and, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of action in it, you know? Gosh, so. yay, I'm excited. Yeah. Well, I love this film. So I definitely cannot wait to see what comes next. That's awesome. That's awesome. Great. Yeah. Well, that was all that I had for you, John. Thank you so much for, for chatting with me today. Yeah, it was really great to meet you.